Hi guys, welcome to another tutorial on the TBM 930. Uh, as promised, I'm going to do this tutorial on loading flight plans um, inside the TBM 930 within the Garmin G3000. So as you can see, I'm at the start screen here and all I've done is selected uh, an airport, which is Toronto Pearson International CYYZ in beautiful Toronto, Ontario, Canada. And this is actually pretty darn close to what would be my home airport at CNN, CNC, CNC3. Sorry, what I really need is a glass of water. So anyways, with that, I've put us on the ramp. So we're cold and dark. And I'm going to hit fly. And if we can get just get this loaded up, we should be good to do a quick cold start and continue with loading our flight plan. Now that being said, I have prior to this loaded my flight plan in, and I'll flip over to that, Navigraph. And I do this on all my flights anyways. So um, I do find some problems with the integration between Navigraph and Microsoft Flight Simulator, but it's it, it's definitely not perfect yet, but it, it, is, it is a great tool. I definitely recommend it, if for no other reason, just to get yourself the charts that are available. Um, as far as uh, your um, airport charts and your arrivals and your departures, all of these things are extremely important to have if you want to try to simulate um, your flight properly. All right, let's just go ahead and So here we are, ready to fly, and we're going to go ahead and give this a... It's always a little jumpy when you first start it. you got to kind of give it a, a second to settle in, but anyways. Ah, this track IR can be a bit of a pain in the butt. So we're going to wait for our NG to get up to 13. grab that and as you can see uh, from the menu uh, we loaded into Toronto uh, International Airport and we don't have any flight plan loaded at the moment so we're going to do that all um, and you'll have to bear with me like I said with the track IR it always likes to jump and zoom out instead of zooming in but we don't have anything loaded we're going to do it all within the TBM so let's get this over to throttle position All right, so that's that's good enough. We don't need to do pressurization. So uh, with that, let's zoom down here and take a look at our MFD options. And the two things that are going to be concerned to for us are flight plan and procedure. Um, that being said, you, you know you could use the the nearest airport, for instance, to find airports near you if you didn't know their um, identifiers, but. We do know our identifiers because we planned it in Navigraph before. So we're going to click on flight plan and as you can see it's completely empty. Now let me just tab over to Navigraph and you can see that I've got myself a flight plan uh, from Toronto International to Ottawa McDonald Cartier International Airport at CYOW. So in Navigraph here we can see that our airport um, CYYZ Toronto um, and, and I'll give you a little bit of a tour of Navigraph while we do this. We can uh, uh, open the charts list here, and this is actually really nice. The let's just grab something that shows the airport here. If we click on the enable moving maps, we should be able to see us. Yep, yeah, there we are. We're on the taxiway. If you can see the pink uh, little indicator there, we're on the uh, general aviation area of. Uh, this side of Pearson Airport and we'll be taking off from runway 05 uh, heading northeast uh, to, on our departure to our first waypoint. So that is pretty interesting. One thing I like to use this for quite a bit is especially taxing. Now keep in mind I've griped about this in other videos. The um, uh, for instance Juliet taxiway here is not Juliet in Microsoft Flight Simulator so 
this can be a pain in the butt, but at least if you know you're going to runway 05, chances are MS Flight Simulator told you to go down here. And then you can kind of follow along and see where you are at the airport. But anyways, just figured I'd show you the moving maps uh, feature you can see enabled on here too. And as we fly, uh, the nice thing is that you can look at your departure. Let's see a chart overlay here. You can watch your departure and you can see yourself hitting the different um, uh, nav aids on your departure. So it, it is a pretty nice tool to have. And of course, obviously the same thing happens on your arrival side. You can see your arrivals and uh, this one's important, your ILS approach here and, and really important of course is the locate, location uh, lo, lo, the locator, the ILS uh, locator um, so that you can tune 109.5 and pick up the ILS glide slope on heading 071. Uh, you can see at what altitude you need to intercept um, the ILS glide slope here. These charts are important if you're really wanting to fly a little bit more realistically. So anyways, I use Navigraph for that. But what's important here is that at the top of the screen here, we have our uh, information that's required, our airport, the runway we're leaving on, our departure um, plate, our first nav aid, uh, our second nav aid, and our uh, arrival on Capital 5 to ILS runway 07 as our approach. So what I'm going to try and do here is bring this into minimize screen here and what we're looking at really all we need to see is this right up here is our route the rest of it we don't really need for the moment so with that we're gonna go ahead and this was in um, let's see this was in uh, flight plan sorry I just got uh, distracted there when the Navigraph disappeared but uh, so the first thing we're gonna do is let's see if I can zoom in little bit better on this okay so first thing we're going to do is hit flight plan and go out origin and see YYZ which is Toronto Pearson okay whoops hit enter and you can now see that the origin airport Toronto Pearson International is at it then we can go add destination and we can flip over here to see that we are CYOW so here's where we entered, here's where we're landing, CYOW. So we'll go back, C Y W, enter. So now, in a very simple way, this is our direct route from Pearson International to Ottawa McDonald Cartier International. And um, the next step for us is we have two waypoints, MIVIC and ELSA. We're not going to put our departures or arrivals uh, in yet we're going to first work on just the strictly the waypoints on route uh, uh, departure destination and on route so we're looking for MIVIC and then ELSA so we can go add on route waypoint to MIVIC hope I'm not making anybody dizzy here but I'm, I'm probably gonna need to rest my eyes after this so here we go uh, Toronto International to MIVIC and we're gonna add an on route waypoint to ELSA And there we go. And one thing to sort of check is that you don't see something like 4,000 nautical miles in here because there, it's, it, there, there are potentials, like there are a number of different uh, nav aids around the world that are duplicates. Uh, there might be four or five of them even. So you want to make sure, there's definitely none in the area. They, they, they do make sure that they don't make any that even sound similar in the area. But just make sure that you don't see something strange here. I'm expecting around these ranges um, for this uh, for this trip so this makes sense to me I've obviously typed those correct and we can flip back over to Navigraph and see that we now have our uh, departure airport with our first and second waypoint landing at Toronto or sorry Ottawa <coughs> so that's done so the next thing to do here is to click done and then click back and now we're going to look at our procedures so the first thing we want to do is figure out our departing procedure and let's go take a look at our chart. Our, our departing procedure is BOMET 7 and we want to also remember MIVIC. So when we click on departure here, we're going to depart 
uh, Bohm at 7. And our transition is going to be Mivic. Because if you take a look at the chart here, and let's click on our departure chart and show waypoints. And you can see that this is our departure chart, which is called Bohm at 7. So we've chosen that departure here. And we're going to transition on that chart at Mivic, which is our first waypoint. Because if you take a look at these charts, you'll notice there are potentially many transition points. And we can zoom in here. Here's Mivic, here's Notepot. We can bring Notepot to Tiget, which goes to three other places, Olava and Miglo and Iptos. So there's all types of potential uh, ways to navigate on this departure. So this specific departure is described by its departure plate, which is, sorry, I'm looking in the left-hand corner. I'm used to looking at different plates, but on this one, it doesn't show it here, but this one is Bomet 7. Uh, okay, so the Jeppesen one show here, Bohm at 7, and our transition is to our first nav 8 at Mivic. So that being said, we are done with our departure plate. So we can go back, um, and oh, so, sorry, last thing, runway, runway 5, that was correct, but you notice we're, we're taking off runway 5, that is correct. So we can come back here, it shows the sequence of all, all the... Um, um, uh, nav aids on that departure and we can click load. So now our departure is in. If we click it again we can take a look. Yep, it's all correct. Okay, so now our arrival. We're going to go back to our plate here or to Navigraph and take a look. Our arrival is capital 5 arriving via ELSA. So actually it's already put it in because it knows that that's the best um, obviously best route. This is probably using Microsoft's uh, uh, system that they use on the front page there anyway. So um, yep, Ottawa McDonald Cartier International arriving Capital 5 transition LSUP and runway 7. So that's all good. We're going to click load and we're going to come back here. Yep, runway 7. So the last thing to do is for our ILS approach and then we'll click approach and we're ILS 7 transition Amobi. So remember that and I'll show you where it gets that information from and we'll click load. So we're ILS 7 via Amobi. So if we come back to this in green is our arrival and this is our ILS approach here. So if we click our ILS approach and show waypoint labels, we can see a Moby. So obviously this um, uh, approach has different potential transitions. So in this case, we're, we're good. We're coming from Vissal, which is from our Capital 5 plate. So we're good to go. Planted in Navigraph and executed it on the TBM 970. So we'll click back in here and go. I notice the back doesn't always work. There, there are a few little bugs like that, but in this case, you can't go back from here. If you click back, it brings you back to either arrival, departure, where you were. You don't want to click activate approach. That's not, that's when you're coming in on your ILS. So we'll click home. And again, now we can check our flight plan, which has changed because it's now added all of our departure and arrival and approach information. As you can see, departure of OMAT 7. So, uh, Toronto Pearson International to these nav aids on the departure. So all these little, sorry, it's zooming in and out while I scroll on that. So we'll click down and en route to LSUP. And then we arrive at Capital 5 at Canic. And here's our approach IL-7. We trap it at 3,000 feet, the glide slope. You can see all your vertical nav information in here to runway 7. So there we go, that flight plan is loaded. And if we fly that, that works no different than had I loaded that flight plan in the beginning screen of the Microsoft uh, interface or whatever you want to call it. And we can take a look at that flight plan, obviously. Uh, we'll click MFD, yeah, we're on that. And we can scroll out. And you can see we had no flight plan to start. And now it uh, looks like that's as far out as I can zoom. So if we take this range knob here, um, you can use either panel for it, and click it in, uh, click on the end of it, you, what you get is a mouse pad on the G3000. We can kind of scroll over here, and click it again, whoops. And we can see our 
very interesting arrival and approach. So anyways, click that again, zoom back out, to centered on your aircraft, and we can zoom sort of in here so we can take a look at our departure. So that's it, that is loading a priorly planned flight plan from Navigraph into your Garmin G3000 in the TBM 930. Uh, I'm, I'm planning to take a look at some of the other aircraft I am told and promised on the forums that not all the aircraft work like the TBM 930. So it's, it's difficult when you get on the forums because people start saying uh, you can't do what I just showed you how to do and I'm saying no that's not true I do that and then find out later that I guess there is a difference between the G3000 and certain aircraft or maybe there's potentially even a difference on the G1000 maybe this isn't implemented I don't know but I'm definitely gonna go before tomorrow and take a look in one of the G1000 aircraft and see if there's any difference uh, across the different aircraft and I'm trying to think of what other aircraft might use the G3000 potentially the uh, Grand Caravan I don't know if that's a 3000 or 1000 well, probably the King Air, so uh, or that might be proprietary. I don't know. I'm gonna I'm gonna take a look, um, but like I said, I have about I don't know 36 hours of flight time in Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020 right now, and I'd say other than two or three hours of messing around with other aircraft just to sort of take a look at what they look like, and, and I definitely wasn't trying any flight procedures. All my flying has been in the um, the TBM. Uh, I may have two or three hours in the Diamond DA-62 just because it's such a uh, an awesome aircraft, but I definitely wasn't playing with the Garmin, the, the G-1000, and I, uh, I'm i guessing it's just the G-1000, not the NXI, but anyways, I wasn't playing around with it, so I would have definitely filed the flight plan on the main menu prior. Uh, to be honest, I don't see a reason why you, you, you don't do that, so that, that's why, for the most part, I haven't played too much with the Garmin's in the aircraft because... Although, yes, I can sit here and plan it that way, and that's more realistic. Um, that's cool for a bit, but it gets tiring pretty quick. You can just plan it on the main menu, and it loads the same. And uh, So it's up to you. If you want a cold start and fire in your flight plan, in, you know, I find it, it difficult, especially with the track IR, to be always clicking in here. Um, yeah, that's up to you. The, the, the realism is there, though, at least in the TBM 930. Thank you very much guys for watching. I will do another video shortly uh, from this point and off through that flight plan. So I will be going through the next set of procedures which would be contacting Tower for um, approval of this uh, IFR flight plan as filed. And then of course asking for, it looks like we got grass in front of us, so I'd be requesting uh, uh, a pushback and clearance to taxi and taxiing out I'll show you Navigraph on the airports while we taxi uh, and right to hold short of runway and then I'll probably do another video after that about taking off and following the departure charts but anyways that's it for now if you guys like it dislike it um, do what you please I'm not trying to start a channel so if you if, if, if you like the information great if you want to see something throw it in the comments below uh, I'm quite fine with um, criticism or praise either way uh, let me know what you like, what you don't like, and what you want to see. Take care. Fly safe, guys. Bye.